We're going to look at the OpenHIE architecture adopted to show different business domain layers. We start with the core metadata services provided by OpenHIE. That's the terminology service, the client registry, the facility registry, and the health worker registry. These metadata services sit on top of the interoperability layer, which controls access, uh, provides authentication, and other data transformation and uh, matching services. There are a number of software tools um, that can play the roles of these components within the OpenHIE architecture. These are just examples uh, of these tools. There are other ones that can be used. We also have systems that are deployed at different places of service um, that provide sources of clinical or health system information um, that needs to be shared across the systems and cross-referenced with the metadata in the core metadata services. Again, there are a number of example systems that can be used at this level. Next, we look at the business domain layer, which is built upon the core metadata services of OpenHIE and which can receive and interact with the systems at the places of service. These business systems uh, that are needed depend on the specific business domain and they are designed to address specific business domain needs. We'll be looking at a couple different examples of business domain layers on the upcoming slides. Before we do that, we start with a common problem. It's how do we reconcile facility lists? Facilities are one of the key metadata elements that are referenced in most of health information systems. Um, the, in countries. Um, what we're going to look at are two examples where DHIS2 is used as a master facility list within the OpenHIE setup. Uh, you can also use different uh, facility registries that are standalone, but the prevalence of, of DHIS2 uh, in countries um, makes this a good starting point um, candidate for a facility registry. So here, we start with the master facility list, um, which is really comprised of DHIS2, where the management of the organization units provides the management interface for the master facility list. We combine that with interoperability layer to handle data transformation and synchronization services, as well as the interlinked registry, which provides a uh, standards-based interface for accessing the health facility data based on HL7 Fire. Um, in, on the right hand side we see several potential systems that would be deployed within a country that will have a list of health facilities that need to be um, synchronized with the master facility list. In this workflow we're going to look at DHIS2 as being the authority for all health facility data and the component systems such as the EMR, the supply logistics and supply chain system, the human resource information systems are all um, pooling data directly from DHS2 um, as its source of uh, health facilities. We begin with the interoperability layer making requests to DHIS2 to receive the updated organization unit list um, based on changes since the previous night or the previous week. Um, this is then sent into the interlinked registry, which will um, transform the, the proprietary DHIS2 data format into the HL7 fire um, standard using the MCSD profile from IHE. Next, the other systems uh, request the master facility list um, via the fire standard um, and updates their internal facility lists. Um, this setup requires that each of the source systems, um, such as an EMR, an LMIS, HRIS, has to actually have two processes that it knows how to do. One is to um, request a list of uh, health facilities using the FHIR standard, and then write the logic to do um, merging into its internal data store of that health facility data. 
so it requires a, a fair amount of software development on each of the source systems. Um, a second model that you can use um, is to look at DHIS2 as the uh, master facility list. However, um, we look at the potential other systems as providing additional data fields on health facility data that needs to be merged into this master facility list. This could be, for example, um, um, domain specific where a supply chain system may know about all of the depots and be the authority for that information. It could also be on related to the the types of the facility type or uh, service level, which might be encoded in um, the medical record system, or it could be an, an external system that's being used to collect additional data about health facilities. Um, in, in this case, we have as a precondition that we've defined a merge policy between um, the master facility list and the additional data fields that come in from um, other uh, potential data sources. We start out uh, similarly to the last time where we have the um, interoperability layer requesting updates from the organization, organization unit list from DHIS2 and sends it into the interlinked registry um, for transformation into the FHIR MCSD standard. Next, the interlinked registry requests list from the other um, systems that have facility data. Third is that a there's a human driven curation process to reconcile the facility lists across these multiple systems to look for um, uh, duplicated facilities in, for example, an EMR system and the against the master facility list and do cross mapping of the the identifiers between systems. Once we've done the, that reconciliation process, um, the additional data fields can uh, be pulled in from the um, alternate facility list data sources, the EMR, the LMIS, into DHIS2 as a master facility list according to the merge policy that was defined earlier. The next the first business domain that we're going to look at is the HMIS monitoring and evaluation business domain. Here we start with the core um, metadata services, the places of service, um, and then in the business domain layer we add in two um, additional um, software roles, an indicator repository and HMIS. Here, the, we have systems um, such as DHIS2 that can play the role of the HMIS. And for the indicator repository, we can use a stock fire server as well as the a CQL clinical query language um, um, interpreter. Uh, the primary business domain needs here are additional analytic and predictive tools um, based on health service and health system indicators um, and to provide health system monitoring capabilities. So one common problem is how do we align published indicators? There might be a global organization providing help uh, financing for health system or across a particular disease vertical and is interested in tracking effectivity of its programs and implementing partners across um, multiple countries uh, and defines a list of published indicators. It wishes to um, align those indicators with those already collected by the ministry or implementing partners and automatically report into a, um, a global database of indicators. Or similarly, we could have a, a regional network um, or date that wishes to establish a data warehouse of indicators um, um, and have uh, member countries of that regional body report those indicators in 
again, um, with the need to align their internally collected indicators with the regionally defined ones. We'll start with the um, PEPFAR use case. Here we have DATUM as the global um, data collection and reporting system for PEPFAR, um, which is made of multiple components, but the two we're going to highlight here are the HMIS, which is built on DHIS2, and the terminology service, which uses the Open Concept Lab. On the right-hand side, we see a, um, a MOH or implementing partner, which may have one or more systems, such as an EMR or an HMIS in which indicators are being collected or can be calculated um, based on clinical data. Um, and in this scenario, we're going to assume that the health facility lists have been reconciled across all the systems using, for example, the Gopher tools as, as described above. Um, the com key component that we're going to be adding now is an indicator alignment stack, which is going to consist of the uh, indicator, uh, the interlinked registry, which has the aligned health facility data, the interoperability layer, and the indicator uh, repository, which will hold our indicator values and the mappings between them. Um, this alignment stack um, can either sit within the datum or the MOH jurisdiction, um, but requires these components. We begin with datum publishing PEPFAR indicators to the indicator repository um, using the FHIR measure standard. This is the way that an indicator is defined. It's not the actual data values in the FHIR measure, but describes um, how it can be disaggregated, the period of reporting, etc. Um, next, the partner systems can also publish their available indicators um, either from their HMIS or from a, a source data system. Next, a uh, uh, human will intervene and look at the available indicators from the MOH or implementing partners um, and the required indicators for reporting and define mappings from the MOH and partner indicators into the, the PEPFAR indicators. Um, they can use the clinical query language, um, which is a, a standard for describing calculations um, on health system data to define these mappings. And um, there are um, free open source interpreters of the, the clinical query language, CQL. Um, next, um, after this initial setup, the MOH or partner reports their indicators on a routine basis, whether it's weekly, monthly, or quarterly, into the indicator repository. Next, the CQL parser will, will automatically calculate the derived PEPFAR indicators um, as fire measure reports. So this will take, for example, an in two indicators reported on the from the ministry, which um, maybe has an age breakdown of HIV positive clients um, from zero to one years old and one to four years old and combines that into a derived indicator which is the number of HIV positive um, clients from the ages of zero to four which could then be reported to the, the PEPFAR datum system. Next um, the interoperability layer maps the facility identifiers um, uh, reported into the indicator repository into the DHIS2 ID um, that's required for reporting into um, datum using the uh, using the data that was reconciled using the Gopher tools. And finally, OpenHIM can transform the measure report into the ADX message, which can be consumed by DHIS2. Now, if you look at this um, setup, there is very little that's specific to PEPFAR here uh, in terms of data and workflow. We may, for example, look at something like Gavi, um, which is interested in 
indicators related to vaccine um, consumption and utilization, um, and uh, the, the situation and workflows are very similar. We're just looking instead at uh, perhaps an immunization registry as being a key source of, um, of data um, rather than a, a generic EMR. Um, but if you, you go back and forth, you can see that we can accomplish pretty much the same use case um, using the same components and the same workflows with just the difference being the metadata are related to what are the definitions of the indicators and how do we do the mappings um, from the, the source system source system indicators into the required Gavi indicators. The next business name, domain we're going to look at are so logistics and supply chain business domain. Here in the business domain layer, we may have several components such as a product registry, health commodity, logistics and purchasing system, and uh, forecasting and analysis tools. Um, here we have OpenLMIS um, as a potential software tool to to serve as the health commodity logistics and purchasing tool. Uh, and there are a number of um, tools used globally for the product registry and forecasting and analytics that uh, something like OpenOS will need to interface in. Here, um, we're looking at the commodity purchasing, commodity distribution, and some of the, the key business domain, business domain needs within um, logistics and supply chain. Um, one example problem we could try to solve here is what are um, some of the indicators that we could report into the HMIS system from within the supply chain business domain, for example, on stockouts or consumption data. Here we're going to look at OpenLMIS reporting um, its own internal indicators into DHIS2. So here, OpenLMIS is responsible for defining its indicators, and DHIS2 um, is only consuming the ones that are defined by uh, OpenLMIS. Uh, as a precondition, we're assuming that the LMIS and DHIS2 facility lists have been reconciled using the Gopher tools, um, and that the LMIS has already used a product registry to align and categorize common identifiers so that it can calculate its own internal um, indicators and we're also making use of the indicator and alignment stack from the HMIS m and &E business domain um, since we're combining the supply chain and um, m and &E business domains. We begin with the, the MOH or partner or source data system source um, LMIS system publishing its available indicators to the indicator repository as a prior measure. Next, uh, uh, DHIS2 data manager reviews the LMIS um, published indicators that are in the indicator for repository and selects those that it wishes to be imported into DHIS2. And once the, the indicators have been selected, the LMIS and source data other source data systems can routinely report on a weekly or monthly basis those indicators into the indicator repository. Um, next, the interoperability layer can map those facility identifiers into a uh, into the ones that are required for reporting into DHIS2. And finally, the um, indicators that are in the fire measure report are transformed into ADX for consumption by DHIS2. Um, in the next example, we're going to be looking at the OpenLMIS reporting indicators, um, but that which need to be mapped to existing indicators in DHIS2. Um, we have the same repeat conditions as we did last time. We begin with the MOH or partner publishing its available indicators um, from the source LMIS system as fire measures into the indicator repository. Next, uh, uh, 
a human uses the clinical clery language to define mappings from the PEPFAR, the partner indicators into the MOH in required indicators as fire measures. Now we can begin the routine reporting from the uh, uh, LMIS system into the indicator repository. Um, we can calculate the derived uh, required MOH indicators as fire measure reports. We map the facility identifiers um, used in the measure reports to the DHIS2 ID for reporting into DHIS. Uh, which requires a transformation from the measure report into the ADX message. The final business domain that we're going to look at is the health insurance and financing business domain. Um, on top of the, the core OpenHIE metadata layer, we um, build in a, um, a business domain layer that may consist of uh, institutional financing system, mobile payment system, insurance management system, in a civil registration system. Um, there are existing open source tools such as Open IMIS combined with a fire server for insurance management and Open CRVS for civil registration. Here the um, main business domain needs are to ensure that basic provision of healthcare services is provided to all um, uh, um, citizens as well as ensuring that we can scale the health system and identify additional needs for um, coverage. One problem that we have is how do we um, do beneficiary enrollment. We start with our insurance management system which is comprised of Open IMIS and Hearth as a fire data store on the left. We have a client registry, interoperability layer, and for example, a open MRS as an EMR system on the right. Um, the client comes into the health clinic. Before services are rendered, the, a data clerk needs or to identify their eligibility in an insurance scheme um, against the insurance management system. So we begin with the intake nurse collecting and demographic data and registering the patient, uh, which generates a fire eligibility request that gets sent to the interoperability layer. Interoperability layer looks up a mapping of the EMR's client ID to the open IMS beneficiary ID. Um, and then the interoperability layer um, stores the eligibility request in the FHIR data store um, and s as well as submits to Open IMIS um, the request or query using its proprietary API. Once an eligibility determination is made, um, this will result in a FHIR eligibility response which is available, um, made available into the FHIR data store so that the intake nurse can review that eligibility claim using a fire eligibility response, um, again, while mapping the EMR client ID to the um, open IMIS beneficiary ID. Another common problem is how do we submit claims? Um, and here we're going to look at claim submission and adjudication to open IMIS with the fire data store. Again, we have the same um, preconditions that all the facilities have been reconciled, as well as the client lists um, uh, be between Open IMIS and the EMR systems. We begin with the place of the service um, system submitting a claim using the FHIR claim resource. The interoperability layer then um, I resolves the EMR client ID with OpenM. Open IMIS uh, beneficiary ID. The interoperability layer then will stores the claim in the FHIR data store and transforms it to the proprietary XML format for consumption by Open IMIS. Next, uh, at the payee or the insurer, the uh, claims adjudicator 
reviews the claim request um, and uh, generates a resulting in a fire claim response which is stored in the um, fire data store. This claim response can then be used for financial transactions and status checks on claim um, um, submissions by the provi provider and beneficiary.